Hello and welcome to my hangar. The project today is wingtip lights. Got this little wheel and uh, tip strobe here. It's a strobe nav. Uh, very nice little gadget. Very well made. Um, I'd like to put it on the cardinal here. Um, this is Cessna setup, of course, with a little plastic uh, button and the strobe light that's built in and this little shroud that goes around. So the trick is, how do you make this replace that? The answer is this little adapter right here. Get these things from Wilco. And, um, the problem is that they obviously need some fitting up. So our project today is to fit this plastic tip to this wing tip to be able to mount this gadget in there. So I took this little plate out from the back side. It's just little screws. Uh, very simple to get to that. So that's the plate we're really going to be mounting up here. Here's the space I need to fill with this little back plate. So we just line it up, eyeball it. There's a little bit of room back and forth. This is sort of a chicken and egg problem because if you if you try to fit the thing to the wing first and then line up the holes, you're going to struggle to find the holes. So I'm just going to go ahead and make the holes first. And then I'll have this big hole to be able to reach through and feel how close I am. All right, so I've got them marked. Let's go drill them. Okay, let's drill some holes. First thing I do, I made myself some little number eight pins here. They're standard bolts. I cut the heads off and I ground a little point on. And that's useful for a couple of reasons. Uh, it's little hole locators. So we can thread these guys in and now this tells us where these holes are. Um, if we're, um, in some cases you want to fit up the, uh, the housing first or the, the, the uh, fairing, the adapter first, and then uh, and then fit it in and drill the holes where the right holes should be. You know, so you can do the fit first and the hole second. That's great. And the little points on there help you figure out where those holes are going to be. You just press into it and the little, the little points make hole dense and then you drill on the dents and everything fits up. In this case, because we have to align the, this housing to fit exactly the shape of this, we have to go the other way. So what we're going to be doing here is making cuts on here until we can get down to where we can line these holes up with uh, these pins up with these holes and then that will tell us where the fit is and then hopefully we'll be able to adjust here it'll come out even enough that we'll be able to uh, adjust to fit now this contour here and make these holes in the right place so I have a bit of a cheat to share with you but also something different you remember what this one looks like it wraps all the way around uh, the light this one is a one made for the UAVionics uh, beacons and it has a cutout on the bottom and this one uh, is one I've already built out. Uh, as you see, it uh, fits up. <clears throat> fits up great. Oh, there it is. All right, so it fits up pretty well. Um, and this is um, in case uh, this might be useful in case you have a situation where your holes just don't fit where this contour is. So I'm going to see if I can make this one work uh, by working backwards on this. But it gives us a little bit of idea where we're headed. You see, I have a lot of extra material here. Um, sometimes they come pre-trimmed, you can even get them pre-cut to this shape, but because of the slight variation, it may or may not fit your airplane. So what I've done is I've asked them to send me one that was completely untrimmed. I'm going to have to trim this one down to something close to this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it at the front and then I'm going to shave it off at an angle here. It gives me lots to work with because this, of course, is, is pretty flexible out here. Up here, we don't have much choice. So I'm going to be cutting the nose of this pretty close, but then I'm going to taper it off real fast. Our first cut is going to be just kind of a wild wag to get close by this nose here. And then we'll, uh, we'll do later additional trimming afterwards. So I'm just going to give a start right about here. Go 
out pretty hard because I have in the past preserved. I got that pretty close. Um, that that uh, this this space right this uh, piece right in here becomes really important, All right? So then we grab this one, we kind of clean it up. Sometimes I start with a heavier one, coarser one, because I reset my cut right at the top here. So there's a little bit of a sharper change. I'm gonna get that out of there first. That pretty well. Alright, nice and smooth. Okay. And so I think that could probably be shorter, which is good. I came up, I didn't, uh, I didn't cut too far on the first shot. And now it's time to see what the fit up looks like. is up nice and solid, but it's a long ways from flat. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ballpark this. There's a piece of tape here. Nice painter's tape that won't stick too badly. Peel it carefully in case it has any bop. Bad edges. Let's see if this is long enough. So this is kind of my limit. The inside edge there is the limit. I could use the outside edge. I need the other side of the tape. That is. So that's kind of my limit. What I'm saying is I can trim. I can trim, but I want to stay outside that. Inside. Well, outside that. Yeah. And then here's an outside here too. down here. I'm going to do this. Get my pencil ready. Okay, I'm going to get this in here. Well, so there's not as much to do here, see, as you might think. Here, oh, this is the inside edge? Yeah, it's the inside edge. Making sure I'm on the inside edge here. So I've got a lot of the back to trim. So I can go, let's go to about there. And then about there. And here. Let me draw some lines. I might have thought. There's a lot to lose here. You know, I have to be real careful because I'm right in the middle of the tape on this. I think this is going to release us from a lot of tightness on the back. And then we're going to just a little cut here. Just make sure we're not binding up somewhere. All right, let's see where we're at now. Much, much closer. All right, so those are fetched up back one. It's fetched up. Okay. But in order to help me with this next step, I'd like to know where those holes are. So in Oshkosh last year, I very cleverly purchased a hole finder. Isn't that a delightful thing? And the way this works is you just slide in here and you line up on the hole. There it is. And this is just about the right size. So I think I might go to the inside because I am pulled out a little bit. And then this is a handy thing to do, is just get a, a little hand chuck, the right size drill, and you go right in here and line up like that. That should drill me a hole. There we go. That should be my hole right there. The only thing is that this one. We're going to want to pull in as we do it. Okay, and we still have that tape in there. 
which I'm not completely happy about because it's going to add just a little bit of a layer to it. But it also protects it. I think we'll be all right then. So then for this one, all right, so we want this up tight. We want this in and that up because once we get the hole finder out from underneath, it's going to be Okay, we have a hole there. This one's the same way. Okay. I think we have our holes. Let's see. All right, so this one. Then we want to get a lot closer to the hole. Closer to the hole there. I hope that's the right amount. And we're going to take that right about here. That's my plan for that. For this, I think we're Pretty good. And this hole. Yeah. Okay. As you can see, I have a belt sander clamped into the vise here, so let's do a little shaping. Fire this thing up. So I'm going to change the camera angle a little bit because you see what happens is the slip forms. Now when it cools off, it pops right off. But while it's on there, you can't see the line. See how that thing pops off of there? I'm going to change the camera angle so you can see when I, when I put it at the right angle how the, uh, how the shaping works. So there's our trim piece. We pull off the little plastic bits from the inside here. Making a mess in a new place, but that's all right. Take my little sander, polish up the edges. So we've got a pretty big loop down there. But uh, the last couple times I fussed with these, I found that I had a space down there, and I didn't like the space, so I'm leaving extra material. And we'll see if it needs to be trimmed or not. Um, there's something to be said for just saying, you know, that thing blends in very nicely upstream somewhere where it belongs. And uh, yeah, you could make it shorter, but at some point you make it shorter and shorter, and at one point it's too short. And that's when you know you've gone too far, so maybe we'll just leave it long, just like on the other side. Alright, so that's cleaned up pretty nice. Now there's, yeah, that angle's pretty good. Alright, I'm going to pull the tapes off of here now. I'm past that point, and I think they're impeding my fit up a little bit. I have nice smooth surfaces to slide on when that happens. Alright, so you make sure our nose is in. Dial these out, dial these in. Is up pretty well. So I think there's a possibility that this might just bolt right up now. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. 
how that works. They've been operating on the hole locations all this time. Now we're operating on the plate. So the plate's going to pin it down for us much more specifically. Okay, so when I look down inside there, I see there's a little plastic in there. So what I'm going to do is take my take my guy here. Just going to carve that out. Okay, so there's a little bit of movement here, a little bit of play. Just cleaning out around the hole. The fact is, you don't need to have a small hole there. You could have a big hole there, because it's clamped. It's going to be clamped in between, so you really don't need to worry about that as much as I am right now. But I like to sneak up on stuff, as you've noticed, right? It's a little silly to be using a drill for that. Could be doing it by hand. Okay. Now here's a good question. I've got my small drill bit here. I'm going to see if that hole is right under there. If not, where it is. It's right there. And this one? It's right there. Okay. This hole, as you remember, is slightly on the small side. Yeah, we're not finding it there. I have to push in a little. Yeah, there it is. Same story there. I don't want to Tighten that. Okay. Yeah, that works pretty well. So let's go ahead and try fitting up the gadget itself. See how that's going to look in here. Right there. And it goes on it. Yeah, I think that's going to look just fine. All right, time to paint it blue. So we're all back together and uh, ready to send these guys out for paint. Um, I'm getting some other things painted, so you know. Otherwise, I would I would just paint them a, a, a pretty close blue. But I think we're going to try and match the the blue pretty you know, a little closer, maybe even match the flake with a little bit of luck. So uh, I'm going to go throw this into the bag of parts that we're going to paint blue uh, when that project happens, and then uh, we'll come back and put it up. For the meantime, we can keep flying. Um, so that's my little set of tricks. You notice I ended up still with a pretty big area down here, or before I would have trimmed that up short and I would have had a gap. Um, and I did do a couple of these before in some of the earlier versions of this. Um, so I'm glad to share the lessons I've learned. And I'll be watching this video the next time I do one of these myself, just to remind myself how I did it. Hope it helps somebody. Uh, enjoy your projects. We'll talk to you in the next one.